What's this? Some of the information in these documents I have of these two knights is missing. What am I going to do? I believe I can answer that question. Who are you? Who I am is not important. Who I am, I am here is important. Can you help me with in the information about these two knights? Yes, for I witnessed these events firsthand. Who are you? Come, I will show you. Clothes, that face, this castle, you're King Arthur. I am, and you are. This man is from the future, my lord. Here to record the events of your two most valiant knights, Sir Tor and King Pelinor. Ah, uh, thank you, Merlin. Here, enjoy the feast and festivities. Uh, Sir... Mallory. Sir Mallory. Ah, Sir Mallory. Splendid to meet you. Uh, yes, Sir Tor and King Pelinor. They're two of my favorites. Just last week I was talking to Sir Kay and... Ah! <laughs> Squire! Squire! Seek out Sir Tori and King Pelinor. Tell them I have a uh, duty for them. I believe I have a way for you to write down the events that are about to happen. Um, if you would like to go along and see the feat that these brave knights are about to accomplish, then maybe I can send you along to describe down the events that are about to happen. Lovely Lord, thank you. And you, Sir Pelinor. Hi. Pleasure to meet you. As you may know, I am accompanying you on your uh, when you complete your quest. Alright. Well, why don't you come with me? Because I'll be departing the Fort Search Pelinor. Did you catch the joust last Pentecost? Oh, yes, I did. It was quite lovely. It's a one. Sir Tory had set off on his quest of the bracket, and had not ridden far through the forest when a dwarf appeared before him. The dwarf said, that no knight may ride his way without first fighting his masters. Sir Tori jousted and fought with each in turn, and overcame them both. was fighting on foot. Sir Meliot at once knelt before King Pelinor and yielded. Sir, I will not fight a knight with your prowess, he said. And if you would do the honor of lodging with me tonight, I will give you a horse that I promise will please you. Pelinor agreed, and so they settled down to a bivouac for the night. Pelinor was then startled by the sound of horses approaching from opposite directions. What news from Camelot? said one. Bad news, said the other. I fear we shall never break them. As for that, said one, I cannot agree. I have in my wallet a deadly poison. King Pelinor continued his journey in the morning, and came to where a mangled corpse was, for it had been preyed upon by wild animals. King Pelinor was overwhelmed by remorse. Alas, I did not save them, he said. Pelinor then took the remains of the knight and had him decently buried.
Then, I returned to the castle and started to write down what I had observed. When Merlin came in and greeted me, and he took me back to my own time. I'll finish with that section. Oh, now for Lancelot Du Lake. Ah, oh, I left those parts in Camelot. i